Okay, we are back with part two. I would suggest watching part one first, but if you think you're ready for the spicier topics of layers three and four, be my guest. I should stress, we'll be entering heavier spoiler territory from here on out. Well, let's get straight into it. Layer 3 Cockpit Mode These are forms that some rangers would gain when piloting their zords, starting with samurai. This happened due to the Shinkanger cockpit footage being deemed too Japanese. Yeah, too Japanese for a show involving samurai. Regardless, they became a trademark of the Neo Saban era, and in the end, are a harmless addition that just helps sell more toys for the most part. Kalish Explosions. This is a fan term meant to describe the style of explosion that was most common during the Disney era and named after writer-producer Bruce Kalish. These are explosions that happen behind the ranger and make him fly towards the screen during fights. Despite being named after Kalish, they were actually the creation of stunt coordinator Mark Harris. As for why the explosions changed like this during the Disney era, it was because of Disney's broadcast standards that didn't allow the explosions to be in front of the rangers anymore. UK Edits. In UK broadcasts, Power Rangers is subject to many cuts and edits to its episodes for things such as child endangerment, scenes they consider to be particularly violent, civilians getting hurt, or scenes of flashing light effects. Usually these scenes I either edited down or cut altogether from the final broadcast. Happy days are over, Konami. Bandai of America Purple Triceratops At San Diego Comic Con 2014, Bandai showed prototypes for the at the time upcoming Dino Charge toy line. Among the toys on display was the Deluxe Megazord, but there was something really wrong with it. The Pink Ranger's Triceratops Zord was painted purple instead of pink. This was even weirder considering that there was a Purple Ranger already on the team. Bandai would say that such a large pink component of the Megazord wouldn't sell, but enough backlash and outrage made them change the color back by the time the next prototypes were on display at Power Morphicon 2014. Girls Don't Sell At New Year Comic Con 2017, Bandai would state that they would be winding down production of figures of female rangers in their different lines due to them not selling. And it was true. While it was a controversial statement for the company to make at the time, the girls were usually shelf warmers in the main 5-inch line and the legacy line. Cassie returning as Lost Galaxy Pink While Melody Perkins would come in to reprise her role as Corone and take up the Pink Ranger mantle during Lost Galaxy, the plan was originally for Patricia Jolly to return as Cassie and stay on as the Pink Ranger after her two-episode stint in To the Tenth Power and The Power of Pink, but left due to payment disputes. 
Despite becoming a new main cast member for the rest of the show, she would only have been paid with a guest star rate that is causing her to walk out on the show. Unused monsters popping up later. During the production of Power Rangers, just about everything is sent over to the US or New Zealand from Japan to be used. Some things, however, never get used, but it's safer to send everything rather to not have it and need it. Due to this, sometimes monsters go unused in the series they were meant to be used for, but would appear later either unchanged or tweaked to fit the show that they did end up in. Usually they end up in the background of large monster groups like the Onyx Tavern, or most notably the case of Furio from Lost Galaxy. He was one of Scorpius's generals early in the series and kicked off the events of the season. His suit comes from Mega Ranger and was the final monster form of Dr. Heinlar, the main villain of that season, who never got used and in space and was slightly modified to be used in the early episodes of Lost Galaxy. Most recently though, Void Queen from Dino Fury is repurposed from Madame Noir from Russia Sentai Tokyo, which was skipped in Power Rangers. Ron Wasserman. Ron Wasserman was the music composer for Power Rangers from Mighty Morphin through In Space. He's the man responsible for the show's openings and background music. He would eventually return for SPD and most recently for Once and Always. He's also worked on many other shows including the 90s X-Men series, VR Troopers, and the English dub of Tekamon Blade. Zord Builder This was a play pattern Bandai implemented to all of its Megazords beginning with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers 2010 until they lost the Master Toy license at the end of Super Ninja Steel. This allowed for Megazord toys from different seasons to be compatible and interchangeable, but didn't compromise their built-in gimmicks. Some previous Megazords were compatible if they happened to have the same style of pegs, but this was not by design. Zord Builder allowed for some... interesting combinations to say the least. VR Troopers Riding on the VR craze that likes to come back every now and then, VR Troopers was another adaptation of a Toei Tokusatsu series by Saban that used footage from Chojinki Metalder, Jiku Senshi Spielban, and Uchu Keiji Shider. The show follows Ryan Steele, Caitlin Starr, and J.B. Reese fighting back against Grimlord as he attempts to conquer the real and virtual worlds. The show ran out of usable footage and was canned after two seasons. Though never made canon to Power Rangers show-wise, the Boom Studios comics would canonize them with a mention in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number 53, where they are listed as potential candidates to become the new Green Ranger, with Grace saying, Some are Promethea employees, others are specialized freelancers, and a few are just individuals I've kept an eye on. Big Bad Beetleborgs Beetleborgs took VR Troopers' place as a sister series to Power Rangers in 1996, airing alongside Zeo and Turbo. The show used footage from Juko B-Fighter for its first season, and B-Fighter Kabuto for its second. The show saw three kids, Drew, Joe, and Roland, becoming the comic book superheroes the Beetleborgs in the real world after going into the haunted Hillhurst Mansion and free a ghost named Flavor, who grants their wish of becoming heroes while inadvertently also making the villains real too. Beetleborgs only lasted for two seasons for the same reason as VR Troopers. No more usable footage. Power Rangers influence in Sentai While Power Rangers generally take so much from Super Sentai, there are actually a few cases where Sentai took a few concepts back. The first of these was the use of the word Zord in Time Ranger, with G-Zord, which would end up in Time Force as Dragontron. Go Busters also refers to the mechas, both good and bad, as Megazords, while also using the word Morphin in their transformation call. Maji Ranger vs. Deca Ranger used the SPD Battleizer in the film as armor that only the Fire Squad had access to. Battleizers in general were adapted for Sentai with some Battleizer-like power-ups like Gokai Silver Gold Mode, Kyoryu Red Carnival, and Super Zenkaiser. The most direct reference however comes in Hikonin Sentai Akiba Ranger's Powerful Rangers. In the episode Delusional Imports, history gets rewritten and Sentai originates from the US instead of Japan, with the first team being the Powerful Rangers. Their costumes were these U-Ranger costumes with a Stars and Stripes belt and collar. 2017 Movie Sequels The 2017 Power Rangers reboot was meant to be the springboard for a new big box off superhero franchise, until the first movie ended up being a financial disappointment. So much was running on this film that a six movie franchise was already in the works. The only sort of continuation that we got was a graphic novel called Aftershocks from Boom Studios which had the rangers battle the remaining putties with two that bonded humans not too dissimilarly to Marvel symbiotes. 
evil space alien. This was a catch-all term used to describe the monsters in Mighty Morphin, but eventually used in later toy lines. Bandai would use the name Evil Space Alien for grunts or villains who didn't have a finalized name yet, even if the season they were a part of had nothing to do with aliens. Power Morphicon Beginning in 2007, Power Morphicon has been held in Pasadena or Anaheim every two years. Fans can look forward to meeting their favorite actors, writers, and other crew, new show announcements, and new toys and collectibles to look forward to. You can't forget the exclusive figures and merch they sell either. Jew 2 When Mighty Morphin Power Rangers became a runaway success, Saban needed to continue the show, but were going to run out of Jew Ranger footage. Not wanting to change the suits by adapting another Sentai, Saban would commission Toei to create new fight footage with Jew Ranger suits and new original monsters. Eventually, Saban would adapt Die Ranger by using the Zords and White Ranger footage, but still had Jew 2 footage left. They decided to introduce the Thunder Megazord and splice it into Jew 2 footage. Some of the unused and unedited footage featuring the original Megazord can still be seen in the background of those early Season 2 episodes. Legacy Toy Line This was the precursor to the current Lightning Collection, and was the first real adult collector-oriented line made by Bandai for Power Rangers. Launched in 2013 for the franchise's 20th anniversary, these were all original molds meant to update classic morphers, weapons, and Megazords. A 6.5-inch figure line was also released under the Legacy banner, which ran for 8 total waves with some exclusives sprinkled throughout. With the Hasbro buyout on the horizon, many Legacy items were cancelled and the line just kinda ended abruptly. The Lost Episode No, this isn't a shitty creepypasta. The Lost Episode was a special broadcast of the original pilot version of Day of the Dumpster and was hosted by Austin St. John and Walter Jones after the Magna Defender arc of Lost Galaxy. This pilot had some big differences from the final one that made it to air, including Aubrey Dubois playing Trini instead of Tui Trang, Zordon being named Zoltar, and the morph sequence being different. Some footage from this pilot would end up being used in early promotional material as well. Doomsday was the finale. Prior to commissioning more footage and the rising popularity of the show, Doomsday was going to be the final episode of the show that would have been closer to G Ranger's ending. Rather than Goldar piloting Cyclopsis, it was going to be a child named Bubba, who was Kai, which Bandora, or Peter Repulsa's, son in the Sentai. It would have ended somewhat similarly to the final episode, with Zordon offering the teens to go back to their normal lives after sealing Rita back into the dumpster, before deciding to keep their powers to fight any other villains that may show up, and ending on Rita swearing revenge from her prison in space. In the version that did air, it ended the same, but Rita escaped and was not conclusive, leaving the show on a cliffhanger. How In Space Became Space Themed during pre-production for what would become In Space, Saban received early sketches of Mega Ranger and believed that the series would be set in space. The Zords were different kinds of spaceships and vehicles, and Saban went full steam ahead on the concept. Eventually, Mega Ranger evolved into a technology-themed season, but with space-themed mecha, so it all worked out in the end. Silver Stripe Green Ranger the Silver Stripe Green Ranger is an odd variant of the Mighty Morphin Green Ranger that first appeared in the Dino Thunder episode of Fighting Spirit. As the name would imply, the Green Ranger had a large silver stripe going around the visor towards the eyes and passing the red gem. This version of the Green Ranger also had a silver power morpher rather than the unique gold one he's always had. This wasn't a one-time fluke, however. During shooting at the legendary battle for Super Mega Force, the Green Ranger suit was the same but was color corrected in post production for the final episode. Most recently, the suit was paid tribute to with a Lightning Collection figure in 2019, also marking the first Green Ranger figure in the line. Time Force Original Ending Time Force has one of the greatest finales in the franchise, but it could have ended in a much different manner. First, Eric the Quantum Ranger was meant to die, much like his counterpart Naoto did in Time Ranger. This was so close to happening, in fact, that a version of the final scene at the beach was shot without Daniel Southworth. Jen was also initially meant to stay in the past with Wes, but this was vetoed. This, along with the push to adapt Sentai more closely rather than have more original footage and stories, was what led to writer and producer Judd Lynn to leave the show before coming back years later. Hyperforce A pseudo-continuation of Time Force set within its own continuity, Hyperforce is a Twitch tabletop RPG livestream series that saw some veteran ranger actors including Peter and Yoshi Sudarso and Paul Schreier 
play new rangers from the year 3016, along with a few new faces to the series. Hyperforce's campaign saw a group of Time Force Academy cadets on a mission to stop a mysterious enemy that wants to unravel the fabric of the universe. Since their debut, the Hyperforce Rangers quickly became fan favorites and have since appeared in the Shattered Grid event and even got their own one-shot comic in 2023. Galaxy Rangers Pitch When Haim Saban was shopping around his idea for a show that took Japanese stock footage and inserted American actors in order to appeal to an American audience, he would send a pitch pilot to Bandai of America and different networks. This pitch reel would combine footage from his previously shot pilot, Jew Ranger fight footage, and Judas Priest's Electric Eye as its soundtrack, and given the early name of Galaxy Rangers. After years of attempting to bring Sentai to the US, this was what finally helped the idea land in the right hands. Ryan Steele was the Gold Ranger. When the Gold Ranger was introduced in the Power of Gold during Zeo, his identity was a mystery to everyone and this would continue for a few more episodes until it was revealed that he was an alien lord named Trey from the planet Triforia. In the episodes prior to this reveal, the Gold Ranger was voiced by Brad Hawkins, who previously played Ryan Steele in VR Troopers. Though I could not find any sort of confirmation during my research, it's highly speculated that Brad was meant to reprise his role as Ryan in Zeo and by extension connect VR Troopers to the main Power Rangers universe, though this was merely an idea that floated around in the writer's room and no plan was ever actually put to paper. Ninjor and the Power Coins The Power Coins are the main source of power for the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and their origins will not be explained until Ninja Quest Part 2, where it's revealed that an ancient ninja master by the name of Ninjor forged the power coins thousands of years ago after learning how to tap into the morphing grid and harnessing its powers in the Temple of Power. Even though he is an important character to the lore of the franchise, he never made an appearance after the season he was introduced in, though there were plans for him to return at some point but those plans would fall through. Cancelled Super Megaforce Cameos when Super Mega Force was beginning production, cameos from previous ranges were confirmed to happen much like in Gokaiju. Many actors were invited to return, but in the end only 13 would make the cut. Many declined for various reasons, including Valerie Vernon, who said, One month wasn't enough time, especially when you have kids. If I was given two to three months to plan, I would have gone. I'm so bummed. I was looking forward to seeing some of my old friends. Maybe they'll do another one soon. I'd love to be in the next one. Worse yet was some actors got invited to return, only to have their invite rescinded, as was the case with Rhett Fisher, who sent in a now deleted tweet, Guess who was invited to do a cameo on PR Megaforce and then uninvited the next week due to budget restrictions. How RPM Got Made During the last few years of Disney's ownership of the series, they grew uninterested and even ashamed of owning it, and planned to end the series after Jungle Fury. However, due to previous obligations made with Jetix UK, Disney was contractually obligated to produce one more season of the show, thus saving the series once again. Matt Cook In the Boom Studios comics, the story of Tommy and the Green Ranger powers remains mostly the same. That is, until Matt Cook, a previously relatively minor character in the run, became the new Green Ranger thanks to Grace Sterling, Zordon's Red Ranger from 1969, and her company, Promethea. Billy was able to repower the Dragon Coin, and combined with the technologies of Promethea and the Green Psycho Ranger dagger, created the new Green Ranger, and Matt worked under Grace and served alongside the Mighty Morphin Rangers, and is currently still in the comics as of the writing of this video. Toys as Props Many times when you see morphers or smaller weapons on the show, they're actually using the toys. This is usually due to the fact that it's cheaper and quicker to go out and buy the toy to replace as the prop, rather than to have the prop department make a new one if it breaks. Sometimes the toys they use are better than the props that they were based on. The Legacy Power Morpher was so accurate and sturdy that it went on to be used in the Kyoryuja vs Go Busters movie, and eventually in Grid Connection and Once and Always. Turbo, a Power Rangers movie three hour cut. The Turbo movie was originally meant to be much longer than it ended up being and was cut down significantly. Scenes that were cut included a scene with Tommy and Cat fighting a crocodile with a flamethrower while on the search for Larigo, which made it into the comic book adaptation and was even pictured on the back of the VHS release. A scene explaining the disappearance of the Zeo powers was also cut and would have seen Divatox fight the Zeo Rangers where they would have lost their powers and Zords with Billy engineering the turbo powers with the leftover Zeo crystals. This had to be cut due to David Yost leaving the show prior to filming the movie. 
The movie was cut down because producers thought kids wouldn't be able to sit through a three-hour movie. And they're probably right. Talon Ranger slash Dark Ranger. In Juden Sentai Kyoryuger's summer movie, Gaborincho of Music, an evil ranger named Death Ryuger was introduced. When Dino Charge was announced, it was unknown whether Saban would adapt the character for the series. Once the Dino Charge Morpher was released, sounds were discovered that mentioned a Talon Ranger, and once Dino Supercharge rolled around, Death Ryuger's Spinosaurus Zord and monster form appeared in the show, and there even exists a Dark Energem. The toy for the Spinosaurus Dino Charger even activates the Talon Ranger sound in the Morpher. However, no Talon Ranger ever ended up appearing, causing confusion. A few years later, we finally did get a Death Ranger counterpart, now named the Dark Ranger in the Boom Studios comic story, Beyond the Grid. After becoming the keeper of the Dark Energem at the end of Dino Supercharge, Heckle would build a morpher based on Zenowing's own Titano Charge morpher in order to stop Lord Arcanon from destroying his homeworld Sentai 6. He would also go on to join the other remaining rangers after the universe was recreated at the end of Shattered Grid and fought the Praetor, a self-exiled Morphin Master. Home Media Releases Believe it or not, proper home media releases for the series were nearly non-existent up until the show's 20th anniversary. There were some VHS releases until halfway through SPD where the format was abandoned. This caused shows to only have less than half of their episodes available for viewing in a pre-streaming world. Unless you caught up with the show as it aired or caught reruns, you would never know how some of these shows ended. The only shows that had their finales released in some form on home media before the complete season sets were In Space, Lightspeed Rescue, Time Force, and Operation Overdrive. One of the only ways fans could rewatch was through importing German complete season DVDs that included an English audio track. Nowadays, you can easily find the entire series on YouTube with the more recent seasons on Netflix. Masked Rider Saban's attempt at adapting Kamen Rider Black RX, Masked Rider first appeared in a backdoor pilot for his series in the Mighty Morphin Season 3 three-part premiere, A Friend in Need. The series follows Dex, Prince of the Planet Edenoi, who escapes to Earth in order to stop his uncle, Count Dragon, and his army of insectivores from conquering it like he did his home planet. The show wasn't particularly popular and failed to catch on, and rumor has it that Toei hated it. Though Soban and Hasbro had never gotten the rights back to re-air or re-release the show, the rights to concepts and characters created for Masked Rider were kept, as Edenoi and King Lexian would appear in issue 18 of Boom Studios' Go Go Power Rangers comic. Chroma Squad This game was developed by Behold Studios and released on April 30th, 2015, and funded through a very successful Kickstarter. The game is a strategy RPG and a love letter to Tokusatsu as a whole. However, it ran into a bit of trouble during its Kickstarter, when on July 17th of 2014, it was announced to backers of the game that producers and attorneys from Saban had contacted Behold Studios due to the game's similarities to the show, despite being based on much more than just Power Rangers. I was able to talk to a staff member from Behold, who will stay anonymous, who stated to me that, Lawyers had even come to visit the studio in person to oversee the game from time to time. Saban's attorneys essentially bullied the team into splitting royalties or to risk multiple long-running lawsuits and the game possibly never releasing. After coming to an agreement, the subtitle, Inspired by Saban's Power Rangers, was added to the game. Early versions of the game even named the villain Dr. Soap as Dr. Maya. Heim is spelled backwards in reference to this whole debacle, but was patched out months later after the lawyers figured it out. The Power Rangers get virtual with the next generation of explosive superheroes. Let's do it! VR Troopers, virtual power, virtual fun. Oh, great, now I can talk. Virtual reality, bad guys with an attitude. I'll get those VR Troopers yet. VR Troopers, get virtual. Weekdays at 6.30 a.m. on TV62. There's your coordinates. If we can't have the Gold Rangers' powers, no one will. Here are mine! Fire! Experience the extreme. That's the intergalactic warning system. Power Rangers D.O. You found the fighting Face monster foes. Now there will be no stopping me. Log on to the gold. The gold is Join the generation of the strong, brave, and bold. Gold Ranger power. Watch an all-new Power Rangers D.O. tomorrow after Big Bad Beetleboards on Fox Kids. May the power protect you.
Player 4 Gundam Wing Endless Duel Okay, what could Gundam possibly have to do with Power Rangers? Sentai maybe, but Power Rangers? They actually share a pretty interesting connection. The Super Famicom game Gundam Wing Endless Duel was developed by Natsume and released in 1996 and was a fighting game featuring the cast of Gundam Wing in their first video game. The game reuses and improves on the fighting engine originally created for Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Fighting Edition. Trakina's Revenge Production Issues When the Lightspeed Rescue Lost Galaxy team-up was written and negotiations for the Lost Galaxy cast to return were happening, Amy Miller, Trakina's actress in Lost Galaxy, was unhappy with the script, including the fact that the little girl in the two-parter was having more screen time and importance in the story than the Lost Galaxy cast were having in their own team-up. It doesn't help that the cast was initially promised a full-length reunion movie and only ended up getting this. Drakina was then recast with another actress, but that wasn't the only problem. Danny Slavin, who played Leo the Red Galaxy Ranger, would leave after first unit shooting after a pay dispute, and Leo's ADR was provided by another unknown actor. He was originally not going to appear in Forever Red either due to this previous falling out. The special was shot with Leo in suit the entire time, until a deal was struck and Danny Slavin was inserted in post-production. On-screen deaths Despite monsters being destroyed and the rangers saving people's lives during attacks, there are very few on-screen deaths of characters, but that makes the few that do exist quite notable. The earliest being Zika and Magna Defender from Lost Galaxy. 3,000 years before the start of the season, Scorpius killed Zika, the Magna Defender's son, in front of him, and he would embark on a lifelong mission to avenge his son and search for the lights of Orion. Later, he'd attempt to take down the colony Terra Venture to finally take his son's killer with him, but eventually realizes the error of his ways and sacrifices himself to save the colony, saying the spirit of his son and his final few moments guiding him. Later in the season, Kendrix, the Pink Galaxy Ranger, would sacrifice herself in order to save the colony, her team, and Cassie, the Pink Space Ranger's powers, making her the first ranger to die in the line of duty. She would be resurrected at the end of the season, though. Then, during Wild Force, Master Org killed Cole's parents and attempted to kill Cole as a baby after years of rejection and being pushed aside. Lastly, and most recently, Trini dies in-universe during the prologue of Once and Always, and her powers are then passed down to her daughter Min, missing Dino Thunder Packy Zord. So during the Dino Thunder line, every Zord that was released in the Japanese line got released in the American one, even the one that was exclusive to the Abba Ranger movie that didn't get adapted. That is, except for one Zord. The Packy Zord was for whatever reason not released in any form, leading to the Triceramax Megazord to be missing an entire arm when formed. It's unknown why it was left out, especially when they were just shy of releasing a complete set. Super Legends Super Legends was an early attempt at a collector-oriented line that debuted during Jungle Fury and saw brand new figures of older rangers for the first time in years such as Lord Zed, the Green Samurai Ranger with a Super Mode variant, and the Gold Zeo Ranger. It was a short-lived line, but was a step in the right direction before the introduction of the Legacy line. Forever Red Deleted and Extended Scenes Forever Red was initially pitched as a one-hour special that could be split up as a two-parter during reruns, but this idea was struck down by Disney because they saw it as a waste of time and money to advertise old toys. In hopes of Disney changing their minds down the road, they shot more footage than was needed, with much of it being cut down or cut entirely. This includes a longer scene at the park with the Wild Force Rangers breaking up an argument among some kids, and a longer scene with Bulk and Skull in the pool, and a scene with Cole and the other rangers walking down the halls of the megaship. Other scenes that were written but never shot included Cat picking up Tommy from the hangar and confirming their marriage, Eric and Wes calling Trip in the future, and Ryan being shown as the new Captain of Lightspeed. Kitbash and Repainted Monsters Many times in order to save costs during production, Monsters will be reused or repainted to make new monsters. Examples of this include Silverhorns being repainted and given a tongue, now called Repilator in Mighty Morphin, Snizzard having his apple removed and given a cobra hood to become the cobra monster in Lightspeed Rescue, and lastly, the Mute Orgs being made up of multiple different monsters each. Power Rangers at Disney World For a while when Disney owned the franchise, they of course had to integrate them into the parks. 
This was by having a meet and greet with the Rangers and the Rangers riding in a specialized car at Disney's Hollywood Studios in Walt Disney World in Florida. The Rangers they had out were always made up of the five most recent Ranger teams and would regularly switch out the oldest Ranger for a new one every year from 2005 to their final appearance at the park on August 7, 2010. Race to the Volcano Race to the Volcano was the initial name for the Turbo movie and had a few notable differences in the film such as a mermaid side character named Mandika who would have guided the rangers to the ghost galleon and the rangers would have aqua suits during the movie as well. Puzzle and Dragons Collaboration In 2019, the long-running mobile game Puzzle and Dragons announced a North American exclusive collab with the Power Rangers that added characters from different seasons including the main Mighty Morphin team, Alpha, Goldar, Rita, and Gold Zeo Ranger. This is just one of many collabs the game has had in its over 10 year history including Evangelion, Demon Slayer, Kamen Rider, and many, many, many more. Lost and Found in Translation This was the 19th episode of Dino Thunder, and the first to really acknowledge Sentai directly. This episode saw the main trio of rangers sit down and watch a Japanese show based off the Power Rangers, which is actually just footage of a condensed Abba Ranger episode, opening and all. The episode comments on how Power Rangers and Sentai is not all that different, and how it's all a matter of perspective. Possibly a dig at Sentai purists, with Connor being unwelcoming of the idea of their stories being adapted for another country before coming around at the end of the episode. Power Rangers in Japan Despite Power Rangers taking Japanese footage to create a show distinct from its source, Power Rangers has actually been dubbed back into Japanese and brought to its land of origin. Power Rangers was dubbed consistently from Mighty Morphin to Lightspeed Rescue, and then would get a few sporadic dubs over the years, some even getting dubbed by the actors from the Sentai it's adapted from, like SPD. Power Rangers does have a small but dedicated fanbase in Japan as well. For example, Twitter artist at CometLib would draw fan art and brief illustrated summaries for Beast Morphers episodes in Japanese. Power Rangers Hexagon Power Rangers Hexagon was a pitch for the 11th season that eventually became Ninja Storm. This pitch by Amit Bamik would have seen an umbrella organization of Power Rangers who were defending the Earth around the clock, led by Tommy, who was written to be similar to Nick Fury. The concept of all these rangers working under a single operation was somewhat foreshadowed in reinforcements in the future part one, when Wes tells Cole, So the rangers out there are right. We all fight for the same goal. The Wind Rangers would have been the newest recruits, and their powers would have linked to Ninjor. Other rangers from various seasons would have had recurring roles or cameos, such as Joel from Lightspeed being the rangers' stealth helicopter pilot, to returning villains who didn't have their stories wrapped up, such as Scorpina and Lokar. Eventually, there would be a rogue sect of rangers who would rebel against the Hexagon, which was where the Thunder Rangers would have appeared. These rogue rangers believed that every ranger team should operate on their own, rather than be controlled by a higher authority. Eventually, there would be an all-out war against Tommy, who let the Hexagon grow out of control, and would don what is now known as the Green Samurai Ranger power due to its resemblance to the Mighty Morphin Green Suit. This was a really ambitious pitch that might have actually happened had Disney not come to own the franchise. Usually this pitch is described similarly to Civil War, though it's a lot closer to the Spider Society from Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse of anything. Dragon Shield Origin The most unique visual aspect of the original Green Ranger is the large golden shield and armbands that he uses, but other than making him stand apart as a new ranger that would show up later than the main five, there was never really an explanation given in the show. Once again, Boom Studios comes in and gives new lore to the franchise. The shield was actually originally worn by Lady Fiena, a sorceress that was an ally of Zordon and is the mother of Rita Repulsa. When Rita was trying to unlock the powers of the green power coin, she needed the spirit of someone strong and worthy and intended to find someone on Earth, but eventually sacrifices the resurrected spirit of her mother. As Lady Fiena is being absorbed into the green power coin, she makes one final promise to Rita that she would always protect her no matter what and the shield she wore in life became the dragon shield from that point on. Power Rider Trademark In 2011, Saban Brands filed a mysterious trademark for something called Power Rider. It wasn't known what it was meant to be used for, but was heavily speculated to be for a new Kamen Rider adaptation. And since this was around the time of Samurai, it was believed that the Decade episodes would be adapted. However, that never happened, and while the trademark was extended twice, 
By 2014, the trademark would be abandoned, and we have yet to get another American adaptation of Kamen Rider since Dragon Knight. Alternate Zeo Rangers title. If you've ever caught a glance at this title and wondered where it came from, you're not alone. There was a rumor running around that this title only appeared in the first airing of a Zeo beginning, but this is false. The title was actually used in Asian markets that aired Power Rangers, like these VCDs and Korean releases of the Zeo toy line. Ju 1.5 While Ju 2 footage was created due to the popularity of the show to add more episodes and monsters, Ju 1.5 was extra footage created from the start of Mighty Morphin to give Rita and her gang more screen time and to add more scenes in the Moon Palace. This footage was shot over the course of two days and brought back Machiko Soga and Ami Kawai to reprise their roles. Zio Serials Prior to the premiere of Zio, during reruns of Season 3 and the Alien Ranger saga, there were shorts that aired in place of the Today on Power Rangers segments that told a non-canon story of the looming threat and arrival of the Machine Empire. The reason these are considered non-canon is because they built up the Machine Empire with sightings and panic over time, whereas once Zio started, the invasion was immediate and there was never any acknowledgement of the events in these shorts. Countdown to Destruction was a three-part. Countdown to Destruction, the in-space finale, was a grand send-off to the previous six years of a continuous story that connected various Sentai. It was initially meant to be much grander, however, but was cut down. It was meant to be a three-parter, and it's believed by some that a third episode was shot, and what was shot for it ended up being combined with the second part. Scenes that were rumored to be part of this third episode included Ashley and Andros finally kissing, the reveal of the Phantom Ranger's identity, and one scene that was shot was the fight between Zane and Elgar with his Quantrons and Piranatrons. Only two behind the scenes pictures survived, showing this scene that was ultimately cut from the final episodes. Amy Adams Academy Award nominee Amy Adams was once in the running to play a ranger. Before her breakout role in Junebug, Amy was said to have auditioned for a role in Lost Galaxy, according to Reggie Roll, who played the Green Ranger that season. She would later actually get the part of Dana, the Pink Lightspeed Ranger, until her agent advised her not to take it because it would ruin her career. Would she still have been as big of a name now if she had taken the role? Would she have still been cast and enchanted in the DCEU? Who knows? Casey in Super Megaforce when Casey, the Red Jungle Fury Ranger, returned for the episode Spirit of the Tiger in Super Mega Force, he appeared as a zookeeper working in the tiger enclosure. He helps teach Emma and Jake, the green and pink Super Mega Force Rangers, to summon their animal spirits. But by the end of the episode, when the team returns to the zoo, he's no longer there, and they're told that a Casey never worked there. We then see him again, but he vanishes. This has led to speculation that he was dead, and that this was his spirit helping the new rangers. Honestly, the series is really dumb and pretty explainable. At the end of Jungle Fury, we see that he has become an instructor at the Pai Jua, and presumably in the years between then and that episode, mastered his tiger spirit to allow him to project himself much like the spirit rangers. The Phantom Ranger's True Identity While many ideas were floated around, Phantom Ranger never got his identity revealed. Some theories included him being Billy after leaving during Zeo, Zordon's son, or even jokingly, Justin's dad hence the Phantom part of the name. It would later be revealed by writer Judd Lynn in an interview saying, We ran out of time before we were able to fully develop a story for the Phantom Ranger with everything going on. It would be revealed that Billy was the Phantom Ranger. Boom Studios offers its own take on his identity as being the Morphinaut, who explores the Morphin Grid and locks himself in the grid in order to stop Dark Spectre from accessing it. He'd be found nearly 600 years later by the Squadron Rangers, and would venture with them to harness the power of the Morphin Grid and stop Dark Spectre. After Dark Spectre possesses the Morphinaut, his suit becomes dark, and when he becomes purified, he now considers himself a phantom of who he once was. Walter Jones' the Missing Finger Walter Jones, the actor who played Zack on Mighty Morphin, was missing his left middle finger the whole time. It's very hard to notice, especially back on old fuzzy CRT TVs and VHS releases, and despite the best efforts of Jones and the crew, it is still visible a few times and much more noticeable now on higher quality releases of the show.
He had lost his finger when he was only four years old in an undisclosed accident. It's something that's hard to notice unless you're looking for it, but you'll never forget it once it's pointed out to you. Bat in the Sun Bat in the Sun is a production company and YouTube channel that was founded in 2001 and is most known for their superpower beatdown series, which pits two famous pop culture characters against each other. One of their most popular videos is one in which the Mighty Morphin Green Ranger fights Ryu from Street Fighter, even having Jason David Frank reprise his role in the video. Then they'd go on to make White Ranger vs. Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. These videos caught the attention of Hasbro and Enway, as they were even commissioned to do a live-action trailer for the Legacy Wars Cross Street Fighter collaboration event. Currently, they are working on post-production for Legend of the White Dragon, Jason David Frank's passion project before his passing, and was scheduled to be released on September 4th, 2023, on what would have been his 50th birthday, but was delayed to quarter one, 2024, to do reshoots and make the film the best it can be in order to honor Jason David Frank's legacy. Ninja Khan. Ninja Khan was a toy line exclusive Zord that appeared during the Ninja Storm line and was a repaint and remold of the old deluxe Ninjor from the Season 3 toy line, and was even pseudo reissued during Jungle Fury with further paint differences. That would be where his story would end if it wasn't for one of the least expected and maybe one of the least asked for announcements that was made. Ninja Khan, a Bandai toy exclusive character, was given a new toy in 2022 under the retro-style VHS release of Megazords. Granted, he was a simple repaint and remold of the Retro Morphin Ninja released the year prior, but it's still one of the oddest deep cuts for Torland to go back to nearly 20 years after its initial release. Paleo Max Rangers These were three rangers based on Zords that make up the Paleo Max Megazord from RPM. In concept, it's pretty similar to the Spirit Rangers just a season prior. These were fully designed rangers that could have easily been part of the show but never appeared. It's unknown if this was ever considered for the show itself or purely for the toy line. Though it is weird because we never had toy line exclusive rangers like this before and never got it again after. Meower Rangers Meower Rangers was a weird series of shorts released on YouTube that were just fucking weird to put it lightly. In total, nine shorts were released that saw a group of cats become rangers and Rita being Doge. Seriously. Weirdly enough, it did kind of predict a real cat ranger that would appear in the Boom Studios comics named Yale three years after the debut of the Meow Rangers. Jason Bischoff Pitches Jason Bischoff was a former creative director for the Power Rangers brand at Saban Brands and later Hasbro. Sometime after being laid off from Hasbro, Bischoff would tweet about the previous pitches he made for shows and comics that never came to be. From a pitch to adapt Q-Ranger way before Cosmic Fury called Supernova, to a comic sequel to Megaforce that would have been a better explanation for the Ranger keys and pirate motif, and an SPD sequel that would have starred the new Fire Squad. They could have been great stories if handled correctly with the right writers. Maybe one day these stories could be told as they were intended, or reimagined to better fit any lore additions made since their inception. Movie Madness Movie Madness is the 24th and 25th episodes of Time Force. When pre-production began on Time Force, it was believed by Saban that the Rangers would actually be traveling through time in this series, until they found out in the Sentai that the Rangers travel once and stay in 2000. The episode allowed producers to make the Rangers fight in different time periods, and also use its footage in the intro to fool you into thinking that they would go to different time periods. The only other time they would actually go to another time period in the show would be during Clash for Control, when Wes and Eric go back to prehistoric times to find the Q-Rex. Silver Titanus Silver Titanus was a toy exclusive Zord that was made to create an Ultra Zord combination for the In Space Zords. Unlike his Season 3 release, this version of Titanus was actually remolded to better fit the cosmic aesthetic of In Space. Silver Titanus was also rumored to appear in Countdown to Destruction, possibly in its cancelled third part, however this has never been confirmed either false or true. Crossovers and team-ups that never happened Not everything gets adapted in the Power Rangers, not even the team-ups. Some team-ups that should have happened just never did, like Wild Force and Storm. After SPD and Dino Thunder's team-up, we stopped getting them consistently, unfortunately. Meanwhile, Sentai has them the more often and even teams up with rangers that aren't immediate predecessors, such as Hurricane and Gokaiger teaming up, or the previous Red Ninjas teaming up in Ninja, 
One little known crossover that never happened was a comic crossover between the Zeo Rangers and the Image Comics team Youngblood. Supposedly not much work on the book was made past its announcement however. Power Rangers Power Rangers was a short film produced by Adi Shankar meant to be a quote-unquote satirical take on gritty modern reboots of kids' properties like Transformers. Not really much to be said, honestly. It's alright at best. It's like the short film equivalent of that one Hamburger Helper tweet that goes like, I drew a fucked up version of the Hamburger Helper. This the glimpse into my dark reality. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Season 2 and the movie shooting in Australia. The production for the first Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie was messy, to say the least. Cut characters and monsters, changing of actors, and filming being pushed beyond its intended dates. This would end up affecting the production of the show itself, however. The show's production was on hiatus in order to film the movie, but when shooting on the movie took longer than expected. Five episodes of the show had to be shot concurrently with the movie. These episodes were The Wedding 3-Parter and The Return of the Green Ranger 2-Parter. This is why in these episodes, the rangers appear mostly morphed throughout. Even during the wedding to explain the difference in scenery, it's stated that they're on a school trip to Australia. The Return of the Green Ranger episodes even used scrapped monsters from the movie. The giant rats were originally Ivan Ooze's henchmen, before being cut for looking too low quality for the movie and being replaced by the Oozemen. Fun fact, the rats actually made it into the Game Boy version of the movie game as a boss. X Japan and Super Nintendo Movie Game X Japan is a Japanese metal band formed in 1982 and has released five studio albums. One of the songs in their debut album, Vanishing Vision, called Sadistic Desire, was seemingly used without any sort of licensing in the Super Nintendo version of the movie game as its character select theme. It's a loop of the guitar solo from the song. It kind of reminds me of how Spider-Man and Venom Maximum Carnage on Super Nintendo and Genesis uses the mob rules by Black Sabbath as a boss theme. Rated E10 Plus for ages 10 and up. The Legend of the Power Rangers is yours like never before. Power Rangers Super Legends, the video game. 20 playable Power Rangers from multiple seasons. Explosive combos. Powerful super moves. Multiplayer co-op and mega battles against mega villains. Power Rangers Super Legends, available now for PlayStation 2, Computer Entertainment System, PC, and Nintendo DS. And that's a wrap on part 2. Part 3 might take a bit longer due to how large and descriptive it is, but I hope you'll stick around for it. I'd like to thank ZachXIX once again for his thumbnail work, which you can commission on Twitter. GreenRanger.com for the G2 and 1.5 footage. Ranger Retro Center on Twitter and Instagram for the UK Lost Galaxy edit footage. Their pages are really interesting behind the scenes info and general trivia for Power Rangers. Zeo Ranger UK once again for their info on UK edits on their website. Sakura Stardust and Source Brew for lending their voices, for which I'm incredibly grateful to have on here. And of course, Chunky Monkey from the Power Rangers Discord server for help with footage. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the final tiers of the definitive Power Rangers Iceberg.